St. Lucia is home to a remarkably healthy range of wild flora and fauna. Like all other economies, our country's development relies heavily on its natural resources. Tourists visit the island for sea, sun, and sand. Many others look forward to the challenge of hiking through a rainforest, with the hope of seeing some wild plants and animals in their natural environment. Our agriculture industry is dependent on there being a diverse gene pool to support the cultivation of a variety of plants, fish and livestock. Loss of the island's forests and or the wildlife that grows within it can have serious economic as well as social impacts. Amongst the many wild animals and plants found in St. Lucia are several species that are endemic to the country, which means that they are not found naturally anywhere else in the world. Consequently, these species are considered to be rare and indeed of special protection. In other cases, there are plants and animals that were once abundant but are now so few in numbers that they may become extinct if their decline is not halted. Our park is a, is a case in point. Our park, as you know, was critically endangered and because of our own laws locally and our effort in terms of education and conservation and of, on and protecting the habitat and burning hunting, all those things helped um, seriously in terms of saving the species. Otherwise, what you'd find is that if um, free trade was allowed, you know, you could find animals being removed from St. Lucia and because it, you know, it is of no concern to the importing country, then they would just allow it in. Over the last few decades, unregulated and excessive international wildlife trade has contributed significantly to the decline of exotic wildlife and plants. Animals are collected and sold as pets or for food, ornaments, and to support the traditional medicine industry. Many trees and plants have been exploited, pushing some species to near extinction. Other plants, such as orchids and cacti, are important in the plant and flower trade with several thousands being produced and traded annually. For example, a huge demand for a wide variety of cacti is placing the plant under severe stress. The big trade in exotic species of cactus, and they have parts of Mexico with very, with very endangered species of cactus, and because of the ornamental trade of, of flowers and rare plants, you find that those species have been decimated. In March 1983, St. Lucia became a full-fledged member of CITES, the Convention on International Trade in Endangered Species of Wild Fauna and Flora. If you are a signatory to CITES, you have to make sure that you control what comes in and what goes out. In some instances, you know the more charismatic species such as tigers, elephants, rhinos, and species of that kind have been um, substantially affected by this trade in their various parts and products. On the site, St. Lucia is ob obligated to ensure that those um, byproducts from those species do not enter St. Lucia or leave St. Lucia unless it is authorized by the, the agencies responsible for the implementation of CITES in St. Lucia. As a party to CITES, St. Lucia has agreed to comply with the various rules and regulations of the Convention. The aim is to ensure that international trade in specimens of wild animals and plants does not threaten their survival. St. Lucia is also obligated to pay annual dues, participate in regular meetings, vote on issues and to constantly monitor the status of endangered wild flora and fauna. National legislation is critical to meeting St. Lucia's obligations to CITES and to protect our endangered species. The Amazona versicolor, once facing extinction, survived because of St. Lucia's determination to take action to protect our natural heritage.
Back in the 70s to the early 80s, that population was down drastically, somewhere in the order of uh, about 100 or so. Um, we've since seen a rebound, a recovery in that population. The government of St. Lucia, through the Ministry of Agriculture, Lands, Forestry and Fisheries, in association with other government ministries, all play a role in the implementation of CITES. The International Trade in Wild Flora and Fauna Act passed in Parliament established the process through which CITES is implemented. A management authority headed by the Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Agriculture, Lands, Forestry and Fisheries has overall supervision. It is advised by a scientific authority comprising the Forestry and Fisheries Departments. Enforcement is the responsibility of a number of agencies, including the veterinary, plant and crop quarantine units of the Department of Agriculture. Fisheries and forestry extension officers are also critical to the process, along with the Royal St. Lucia Police Force. The International Trade in Wild Flora and Fauna Act outlines fees, fines and other actions necessary to ensure St. Lucia is effectively able to control the trade in endangered plants and animals. Exotic animals and plants command a very high price on the international market. Traders are willing to pay big money because there is a huge demand on the international market for rare plants and animals. This in turn leads to exploitation of a country's endangered wildlife. There's also evidence right now of Sanusian pirates in Czechoslovakia as to how they reach there, we never know. The trade in endangered species has become very common, especially in the developed world. Um, the, the elephant tusk and uh, the leopard skin, those um, animals are being hunted for their, their fur. That's why this public education campaign is so critical. Our national symbols, our national plants and animals could disappear if they're not shielded from international trade. Public education and outreach needs to address that issue and, and we're hoping to this exercise is about building awareness of the convention because it's, it's unfortunate if someone finds themselves in a bind by either trying to import an animal some pet monkey or whatever from another country they get um, to our port and here it is you know customs or vet people have to step in and say you know this is not allowed where is your CITES permit etc if you're unsure what should be on the list, call the fisheries or forestry departments within the Ministry of Agriculture. For instance, someone comes into the country and they have um, some bag made, by, made from crocodilian skin or some article of clothing with, with, made from uh, fur from a leopard or a tiger or whatever. These species are listed under, um, under the various CITES appendices. <laughs> Here are some facts about CITES that you ought to remember. CITES deals only with international trade in certain species. CITES aims to regulate and in some instances restrict trade in endangered wildlife. CITES does not regulate domestic trade. The appendices 1, 2 and 3 only list those species that are or may be affected by international trade. Remember, the environment is our responsibility and the welfare of all animals and plants found within it is all of our business. We share one planet, one future. Together we can help safeguard St. Lucia's natural resources for ourselves and future generations. Let us do our part to maintain the planet's living forests, rivers and oceans.